Today, we are going to review the essential steps into setting up the 3880 MRI patient monitor system. This will ensure patients will have a seamless care cycle during their time at your facility. This video will focus on powering on the monitor, powering on the pods, and finally, powering on the wireless remote and its docking station. We will provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to connect the system on proper channels, and finally, connecting devices to their power supply and proper charging practices. This video series will focus largely on the features found on our top tier device, and your device's features may vary. Step one, powering on the 3880 system devices. To power on the 3880 monitor, the user will gently grip the white knob that is located on the bottom right corner and turn the knob one click to the right to the monitor on position. The device will then power on instantly. The patient monitor display has been broken into several color-coded sections. At the top of the monitor, the user will see the wireless channel selection, alarm statuses, patient information, patient type, and battery statuses. In the center section, the user will see the color-coded waveforms for ECG, SpO2, CO2, and when activated, the invasive blood pressure. On the right side of the screen, the user will see various sections for ECG, SpO2, pulse rate, CO2, respiratory readings, and when activated, the invasive blood pressure. Finally, on the bottom section of the screen, the user will see the non-invasive blood pressure, temperature, gas, and MAC readings. To power on the control room's base station, flip the switch located on the reverse side so the switch's top half is flush with the device. The base station will then power on. To power on the wireless remote, press the power button located on the bottom right corner and hold for two seconds. The device will then power on. The wireless remote's display is identical to that of the monitor. To power on the wireless ECG, SpO2, and invasive blood pressure pods, First remove the pods from the charging dock on the monitor or optional base station dock. Gently press the green button on the top left corner. The pod will power on instantly. Repeat the process for each remaining pod to be used for this patient. Step 2. Ensuring proper wireless connections. The next step into setting up the 3880 monitor system and remote is to ensure that all devices are connected on the same wireless channel. There are eight unique wireless channels for the 3880 system to utilize. Ensure the 3880 is on a unique wireless channel that is not being used by any other nearby systems. To select the appropriate channel on the 3880 monitors, the user will gently press the signal indicator. A drop-down menu showing channels one through eight will appear on screen. The user will then click the desired channel if it needs to be changed. Make a mental note of the channel selected as this will be used to synchronize the other 3880 components. To connect the control room components to the 3880 system, ensure the wireless remote tablet is properly docked to the base station and both are turned on. If the remote tablet is not docked to a base station or your system is on an older software revision, it might also be necessary to adjust the wireless channel on the base station independently. To do this, press the yellow button and select the channel that matches the 3880 system. The channels cycle from one to eight. Press the button continuously until the desired channel is selected. Once the control room components are on the same channel, confirm the wireless synchronization with the 3880 by checking the signal indicator on the top left. The signal indicator represents the strength of the wireless connection between the monitor and the base station and the strength of the wireless connection between the base station and the tablet. The number of bars shown indicate the wireless connection strength between the monitor and the base station, while the color of the bars indicates the wireless connection strength between the base station and the tablet. Green color bars indicate a strong wireless connection, yellow bars indicate a medium strength connection, while red bars indicates a weak connection. Finally, to connect the pods, the user will gently press the channel select button. The first press will place the pod into channel select mode. The green light will begin to flash. The user will press the channel select button continuously until the desired channel is selected. Each of the four channel lights can represent both channels one through four and five through eight. The blue indicator light will illuminate at the top left corner of the pod for channels five through eight. Once the user has selected the appropriate channel to match the 3880 system, check the connection light on the pod and confirm the 3880 monitoring system has the associated pod battery icons on screen. Step three, charging and powering the devices. On the back of the monitor, there is a circular power port. The user will take the power cable and attach it to the power port and secure it by rotating the adapter clockwise. 
The user will then plug the power cord into the outlet. On the front side of the device, the on charge light will illuminate, showing the device is receiving power. The battery will be fully charged within several hours of first use. Each 3880 monitoring system and wireless remote tablet include batteries that last up to eight hours when fully charged. If you are operating the system on battery power, ensure you insert a fully charged battery into the device before turning it on. To insert the 3880 monitor's battery, line it up to the battery slot on the reverse side. Push in and secure the battery. When the user hears a click, the battery is locked in place. The ECG, SpO2, and invasive blood pressure pods can all be charged on the 3080's docking stations located on the left and right sides of the monitor. Additionally, a charging dock can be added to the control room base station on the reverse side. Simply line up the pod to the slot and gently insert the pod into the docking station. Pods can hold their charge for up to 12 hours with typical use. For more information, visit www.iratamed.com. For technical support, please call 407-677-8022.